60 minutes. Rewind. Not since Mozart has a musician been knighted by a pope. And now because of the extraordinary role he played in organizing the Vatican's concerts for the last 12 years, John Paul II knighted this man, the Pope's maestro, Gilbert Levine, a nice Jewish boy from Brooklyn, New York. So maestro, we're a long way from Brooklyn. We are a very long way from Brooklyn, for sure. You ever pinch yourself and wonder how you got here? Every day. It's, it's the truth. Every single day. It all began one day in 1987 when Levine received an unusual offer to become the conductor and artistic director of the Krakow Philharmonic in Poland. Neither an American nor a Jew had ever held that position before. Poland was the country Levine's grandparents had fled a hundred years ago. And Krakow is less known for its orchestra than for the fact that it's just around the corner from Auschwitz. Krakow was a capital of Jewish culture before the Second World War. 80,000 Jews lived here. They're all gone now, all but a couple of hundred. The late 80s were among the chilliest days of the Cold War. But Krakow had another side to it. The overwhelming presence of the Catholic Church. The city's previous archbishop was a man named Karol Wojtyła, who went on to become Pope John Paul II. Until I came here, I'd never met a Catholic priest. You serious? Never. I had never met a Catholic priest. I hadn't avoided them. I'd never been put in a situation where I, where I met a Catholic priest. So the first priest Levine ever met was a cardinal, his eminence Franciszek Cardinal Moharski, the Pope's successor as Archbishop of Krakow. Levine told him what it meant to him as a Jew to be making music in Poland. And we'll see. He said, Maestro, you must tell all me, all you've told to me to the Holy Father. I said, excuse me? <laughs> I said, hey. he said, yes, yes. He was summoned to the Vatican, and he thought he knew what that meant. I had the suspicion that I would be invited to meet the Pope, and by that I mean that I would be put in front row at the Wednesday audience, that I would have my picture taken with the Pope, and I would go p back to Poland feeling like I had had a wonderful experience. That's not quite how it worked out. He arrived at St. Peter's, was ushered past the Swiss guards as scheduled. But then he was led down some long, dark corridors into a small, book-lined room. It was the Pope's private library. And there he was, the Pope. By holding his hand on my hand, um, he makes me incredibly calm, because he knows that otherwise Mentally, I would have bolted. And he starts uh, talking to me about Krakow. He said, and how is my orchestra treating you? And I laughed, and he said, you know, they're not very, he said, they're not very, uh, very much fun with conductors, you know. Very difficult with conductors. And I'm immediately disarmed. And within five minutes, we were two citizens of the same city. And you could see him almost going back through my eyes as a Jew walking the streets of Krakow. And you could see him, him, getting very emotional. Very emotional. The meeting ended almost as strangely as it began. He did have his picture taken with the Pope, but the Pope wasn't finished with him. Not quite. He's leaving this private library and he goes to the door and he waves and he says, oh, by the way, I'll see you at your concert. I said, what concert? And he just smiles, a very impish grin, as if he knows that he's just thrown a little, I'll see you at, at your, your concert. concert. He leaves. He didn't have the slightest idea what no. he was talking about. Three months. It all works in mysterious ways. <laughs> Everything is in mysterious ways. Three to four months later, I get an invitation to conduct the concert to celebrate the 10th anniversary of his pontificate. It was, as they say, the beginning of a beautiful friendship. And if Levine thought the Pope had better things to do than to micromanage a concert, he found out he was wrong during a rehearsal. And he comes over to me conspiratorially and he says, have you had enough rehearsal? I said, what do you mean? He said, I heard the Pope is coming tonight. Have you had enough rehearsal? <laughs> he told a Pope joke. 
He told a Pope joke, but he told a Pope joke with a purpose, and the purpose was to calm me down, to make a joke that served the purpose of, it's okay, spokojnie, as they say in Polish, relax. Relax? Levine's next move was to propose something so radical that many in the Vatican thought he was mad. I go to him and I say, I would You went to the Pope? Yes. And I said, I, um, I would like to organize in Rome a concert to commemorate the Holocaust. The Pope replied, why just in Rome? Why not make it a papal event here in the Vatican? Why do you think the Pope wanted to be involved in this? The Pope from 1979 has made statements that made it clear that as a Pole who lived through the war and saw Jewish friends, he had real friends, not my best friends are Jewish, but real Jewish friends, his soccer buddies, people he was in and out of the house of, people who were his buddies were killed. And one of the Pope's right-hand men today is Cardinal Lustiger, the Archbishop of Paris, who was born a Jew and whose mother died in Auschwitz. Lustiger is convinced the Pope saw Levine, music, and this concert as a bridge over 2,000 years of suspicion and hatred between Catholics and Jews. He knew that words are not enough to change the minds. To change something, you have to find the right language. So you think the Pope saw Levine as, as an instrument in which to help implement the change in relations between Jews and Christians that he had envisaged? No, I think it's more than an instrument. Music was a way. Mm -hmm. An avenue. An avenue. The music for the concert was chosen by the Pope and by Levine. It began with Kol Nidra, the prayer sung on the holiest day in the Jewish calendar. Six candles were lit in memory of the six million. The night of the concert was like I was in a Jewish liturgical service in the Vatican. It was like a night of prayer, of Jewish prayer. Cardinals and concentration camp survivors united in the Vatican, in the Vatican which had done so little to save Jews during the Holocaust. And what the Pope said at the end of the concert was amazing because he said, they are here with us. They are us, those millions killed. They were us. It wasn't, and it was so, it wasn't they are them. They are us. Those people who were killed were us, humankind. It was after this concert that Levine received his Vatican knighthood. Gilbert Levine became a knight commander of the Equestrian Order of St. Gregory the Great. The Pope chose Cardinal Lustiger to bestow the honor. Must have been pretty weird, a Jewish boy receiving the highest order of the Catholic Church from another Jewish boy. Well, <laughs> yes, and when he embraced me at the, at the investiture, he said, brother. Because in a way, we are. The story will continue after this. Levine's home is back in New York these days, far from Rome and from Krakow. But it was his 12-year partnership with John Paul II that led to the Jubilee concerts. Levine proposed that the Pope's birthday be celebrated with a performance of Haydn's The Creation. And when you mentioned it to the Pope, was he familiar with it? He knew it vaguely, but I gave him a recording. I gave him a CD of one of my competitors. But a dead one. <laughs> <laughs> Best kind. <laughs> Best kind. The text for Haydn's creation is quite simply the first verses of Genesis, from chaos to Adam and Eve, holy to all three monotheistic religions. Okay, but the point is, this is the jubilee of Christendom, not of Judaism or of Islam. Exactly. And isn't that a terrific time for him to have chosen a work that is holy to Jews, Christians, and Muslims on his birthday. He chose this. He could have chosen anything. I think that says volumes for the inclusiveness that he wants in this year for this jubilee. The word is everything. The Pope will be sitting right there. Not on that stool. <laughs> Not. 
these enormous ideas of the popes through music, as music has served in that way through time, is an unbelievable privilege. So for me, when I'm meeting the pope, I'm meeting somebody who's allowed me on his journey just a little bit. He's allowed me to be a footman, a busman, a little, little person on this incredible journey that he's on. <laughs> 